The Clan 5 is one of the best RPGs on the PS2 and my personal favorite of the series. Overlooked at first and nowadays a cult classic, it can easily be on par with Suikoden 2. So let's look into 10 things you may not know about this masterpiece. Number 10. It was going to be a spin-off. Suikoden 5 was released on February 23, 2006 in Japan, localized less than one month later to North America. It was also released in Europe and Australia that very same year. Why the localization was so short is because most of the script of the game was already done. Allegedly, the game was planned as a spin-off to the series, like a Gaiden episode, attempting to connect certain events. Also, allegedly, development was already in motion since before Suikoden 4. However, no one has ever confirmed this game came into existence way before its release. It makes sense though, because some parts and conflicts in the game seem to be somewhat oblivious of the ones previously occurred. Of course, most of this was fixed on the final script. Anyway, it's still a curious piece of information, considering localization was quick. My theory is that Suikoden 5 was finished in 2005 and Konami decided to delay its release date so it could be near the one in North America. Marketing purposes, of course. As to why it became a main title in the series, well, supposedly the team who made it became so fond of it, with the game being very good, that Konami was convinced it had the potential to be the fifth main game in the franchise. Number 9. Co-developed by Hudson Soft Even though Konami always takes the credit for developing this series, the truth is almost every single game has been developed by many different key people. Suikoden was conceived by Yoshitaka Murayama and he himself directed the first three titles. That is until his 10-year contract with Konami ended and he left the company. His co-writer Junko Kawano took the reins for Suikoden 4 into the sign, the writing and the art. That game, however, was a critical and commercial disappointment, so Konami knew they needed a new breath of fresh air, with new people to take the series into a different direction, of course. The result was bringing their soon-to-be subsidiary Hudson Soft, the famous Japanese company responsible for many classic games in the 80s and the 90s. Konami became its largest investor and shareholder since 2005, coincidentally a year before Suikoden 5's release. In 2012, Hudson Soft officially ceased to exist as it merged entirely with Konami. Part of the game's greatness then could probably be thanks to having been co-developed by this legendary company. Number 8. A true prequel to Suikoden Most people are familiar nowadays with the chronology of the series. However confusing it still is, Suikoden 4 is the prequel to all, taking place 150 years before the first Suikoden on the PS1. The game explains some basic historical and geographical stuff in the universe of the franchise. Suikoden 5 takes place 6 years before the events of the first Suikoden, and although it has its own story and characters, part of its conflict leads to the ones in Suikoden 1, 2 and 3. This includes several key figures, economical collapses and the aftermath of the war. According to the director of the game in an interview, Suikoden 5 went back to the roots of the series, mainly because Konami didn't want a follow-up to Suikoden 4 in terms of design and gameplay. That is the reason why Suikoden 5 feels more true to the universe than its two predecessors. Number 7. The Return of George Prime So speaking of connecting the dots in the series, here's probably the most interesting one. George Prime is one of the main characters in Suikoden 5 and his background is very interesting. Prime's first appearance was in Suikoden 2. He simply became a traveler or rather a mercenary after the events of Suikoden 5. You can recruit this guy into your army in the Dunan Unification War. But everything that happened before that is a surprise. George was first one of the six great generals in the Scarlet Moon Empire. 
Then he quit and went to the grasslands to join the Ebony Moon Knights, becoming its leader for a while. Finally, Ferid offered him a position as a Queen's Knight, which leads to the beginning of Zwickland V. During the introduction, we see him as a personal bodyguard for the Prince. What a lifetime, huh? All of this during major events and important locations within the Suikoden universe. It's curious how one optional character in Suikoden 2 was so damn interesting, developers decided to make him a protagonist in the fifth game. It just goes on to prove how the lore in the series was gigantic and deeply conceived. Number 6. The Stars of Destiny Harsh Penalty The games are known for having 108 recruitable characters, with often half of that number being actually playable. They are called the Stars of Destiny. During the war battles, if some of these characters die, they're gone forever, story-wise. This added a little permadeath feature to the games. This penalty was also present in Twicoden 5, but in a more brutal way. If certain characters die, others you recruited before will permanently leave your army. No other Suikoden game had this characteristic before. I guess they really wanted to give some of these characters more sense and more background. Since these videos are mostly spoiler-free, I won't give you any examples, so you better play the game and find out for yourself. Number 5. Enormous commercial failure. Very, very sadly, Suikoden 5 was a huge commercial failure. Suikoden 2 had a limited print run because Konami didn't think it was going to be successful outside Japan. When they realized it kinda was, they put a lot more effort in Suikoden 3 and 4. When the latter failed miserably in both reception and sales, a low print run was then also done for the fifth game. Marketing was kinda there, but the game was released outside Japan a week before Kingdom Hearts 2 and a day after The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. These two RPGs were a ginormous commercial success, quickly overshadowing Suikoden 5. The game didn't even sell 200,000 copies worldwide, which was surprisingly less than what Suikoden 4 had sold. Hard to believe such a great game became so overlooked because of its failure, with original copies nowadays being somewhat rare and expensive. Number 4. Its failure led to the creation of Suikoden Tear Cries. Suikoden Tear Cries on the Nintendo DS is a spin-off of the series. That's what most people believe. In reality, it was intended as a reboot, with part of the team from Suikoden 5 behind it. This included writer Kazuyoshi Tsugawa back again on the script. Of course, the game wasn't marketed as such, but according with an interview with Osamu Komuta, the director of Tear Cries, it was precisely that, a reboot. Konami didn't want to continue with the series anymore, considering Suikoden 5 had been the last straw, so a proposal to head into a new direction but still retaining heavy elements from its predecessors was born. It wasn't though connected to any of the other games. War battles were gone and parties during battles were reduced to four characters again, just like in Suikoden 4. However, recruiting 108 Stars of Destiny, building a castle and an army were still a big part of its gameplay mechanics. In other words, if Suikoden 5 hadn't failed commercially, Suikoden Tear Cries wouldn't exist. Kind of ironic considering the game sold even less in Japan, being yet another commercial disappointment. Number 3. Critical Controversy Even though Suikoden 5 was a commercial failure and a big one, the critical reception was mostly positive. Story, music and characters were praised as well as a return to a party of six during battle. Its strange mixture between 2D and 3D perspectives was criticized but also appreciated. We learned before how the new team was aiming for a classic Suikoden title and in most people's opinion, they succeeded. Over the course of time, Suikoden 5 has been gaining more and more recognition, thousands of gamers are starting to realize and agree that it is an excellent game, easily on par with the masterpiece Suikoden 2. So, it took it around a decade to find its true success within its fanbase. 
Alas, the failure remains a tragedy that obscured the entire franchise into a small niche. Number 2. Directed by a total noob. Suikoden 5 was directed by Takahiro Sakiyama, a game developer who had only worked on a rail shooter for the PS2 called Silent Scope. With absolutely zero experience in RPGs and barely any in video games, for some strange reason, Konami put him at the helm of Suikoden 5. After this game, Sakiyama vanished from the series and from the video game industry. Trying to find information on this guy on the internet is, well, very hard. I'm not sure if the company blames him for the failure of the game, but the truth is, he did a fantastic job with it. In an interview with the defunct German website, he said the game had been the way it was precisely because they wanted players to feel at home. In a traditional way, Suikoden 5 was a great turn-based RPG with a strong plot, still full of political drama and philosophical warfare. In the end, the game was a true Suikoden, and the directing was obviously amazing. I just wish we could know more information about the whereabouts of Sakiyama. Number 1. The Future of the Series One of the localization members for North America, Ryan Graff, confirmed what most people already fear. The Suikoden team has scattered all over the place. Original creators, late developers, all the amazing people who brought this series to life are gone. Did Konami really kill this series? Or was it the separation from most key members going into many different projects? It's been said many times before that without at least a few of these great people, there's no way a true good Suikoden can ever happen again. Much less when the IP is still held by the worst video game company nowadays. The future of the series is grim, which leads to a final question. If it ever comes back, miraculously, would it be as Suikoden 6, still in the same universe and chronology as the main titles, or would it be just plain Suikoden Tear Christ 2, as intended in the reboot? No one knows. A real comeback of my favorite series of all time is so dark that it might be just plain impossible. Alright guys, that was my take on Suikoden 5, my personal favorite in the series and one of the best RPGs on the PS2. It tried to save the franchise from its inevitable demise, but alas, it couldn't. Suikoden may not return one day, but at least we were left with some truly amazing and unique RPGs to never forget. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!